Okay, so um, let's get started, guys. And I'm going to be showing you how um, LinkedIn is powerful. It's a powerful tool for using lead generation quizzes to turn LinkedIn prospects into clients. So um, it's a um, underutilized strategy that's getting a lot of people, a lot of coaches, consultants, online service providers, or general service providers, right? Lawyers, doctors. Um, therapists, healers, um, all these kind of people, um, professional career coaches, um, mindset coaches, speakers, authors, um, all these manner of experts helps them. These quizzes help you to call out your ideal client on LinkedIn and to ethically um, persuade them through a series of questions where you will give an expert result and present yourself as the go-to authority to help them solve their problem. So I'm gonna quickly um, give some background information on this because a lot of people are like, well, I use PDF lead magnets. They've worked really well for me. And um, this is what um, um, I have up currently. Well. The demise of why the demise of the PDF lead magnet. Well, I'm going to um, um, put this to you. The market is close to PDF lead magnets like Chick fil A's on a Sunday, guys. Um, our inboxes are saturated. We are getting more market aware, savvy, and immune to any kind of pitch that's been presented to us. And frankly, PDF lead magnets go undetected and usually unread in our inbox. Right, we're trying to. Um, we're in an age of digital minimalists, minimalism, where we're trying to keep unnecessary clutter out of our inbox. So even though people want to give you their ten-point checklist or their twenty-five-page um, action guide, even though it's a nice to have, they usually don't get opened, and nobody really takes action. So a quiz is perfect. A quiz is the right kind of content to give somebody when you are starting out your journey with them, right? So very early with cold traffic, a quiz is perfect because it is respectful of the person's time. It's a very quick and short piece of content that they can consume and there is no burden on the inbox if they don't wish that to happen. So that's why quizzes are the appropriate piece of content for and the very early stages of your customer journey. Um, and um, again, here's some proof that people are guarding their inboxes. I did some market research and um, somebody said, I've seen a lot of free challenges, courses, templates, right? All like free, but I don't always click on any of these offers. If you're like me, what do you feel stops you from clicking on these free offers? And then somebody said, I don't have a problem giving my email for marketing. I have a problem with daily emails and multiple emails from the same business in one day. That's spamming. Someone said it's um, um, a lot of coaches in this group are teaching clients to give away freebies and sales funnels. Yeah, I don't think they give value, right? And so people are seeing the valuable email and PDF that you're saying has got this great strategy that you want to teach them they're seeing it as invaluable right so the perceived value of pdfs have gone down in the market and we have to switch it up and change our tactics if we want to engage their attention so why lead generation quizzes well lead generation quizzes can increase the bottom line of your for your business they are perfect right to fill your email list faster right i i have seen a 70 percent conversion rate on quizzes in um, in comparison to a 30% conversion rate on PDF. So they're the perfect audience relationship starter, as I said. They're compelling, right? There's something about a quiz that taps into our human psychology. We are driven to close the open loop that a quiz creates. Quizzes are also shareable, especially when the archetypes or the result is humorous and people want to, um, you know, human psychology makes us want to share anything that's funny um, with a friend or family or somebody else, right? We want to be the sharer of, um, of great information. And then quizzes 
um, help the quiz taker get more clarity. So they allow the quiz taker to self-identify where they are on their journey. Um, and they give you more insight into the quiz taker. You find out more about their struggles, you find um, where they want to be, where they actually are, if they're really your target market. All this valuable information allows you to segment them in your um, email marketing tool so that you can send them more relevant content and better offers. And again, like I said, a quiz will give you a bigger and better email list fast. Why bigger and better? More people will opt in. The quality of people opting in will be better because the quiz calls out to them. So you're really calling out to your ideal client. And also the quality of the list is better because your list will now become segmented. And when I mean segmented, I mean that your list is sorted into relevant groups that make sense for your business. If you segment as people are, you know, people are subscribing, you tag them on your email list according to different categories. And then you can use those categories or those tags to send specific emails or content based on those tags. So for instance, if you had, if you're a, um, if you're a lactation coach and you were dealing with women who were about to give birth or were in the first year of um, child rearing and um, you were teaching them tips on breastfeeding, it'd be great if you could tag people as they were coming in and then maybe two or three years later, if you were sending the same emails about the, you know, the, the, um, you know, the strategies of breastfeeding for your newborn child, that would really be out of date information. And what would happen is you would become irrelevant to that person because you were sending them information that, was no, that no longer pertained to them. So if that coach had a segmentation strategy for her subscribers, she would be able to send emails right, based on newborn breastfeeding, just for those people that it was relevant for. And you cannot do that with a PDF lead magnet because you're kind of doing this spray and pray marketing tactic, but quizzes allow you to do that because you can categorize people appropriately. So what type of quiz should you create? Well, um, there's different types of quizzes that are appropriate for different scenarios. And so there's personality quizzes. A personality quiz is a series of questions with no right or wrong answer, and they reveal something about the person's archetype or um, different, um, you know, specific personality or stereotype. There's scored quizzes. There's no right or wrong answer, but your answer is weighted and you tally up your score and, the, um, and your outcome is based on the number of points that you get. So scored quizzes, I've seen quite a few of them, they're really powerful as well. And there's a special business case when you would use a scored quiz. And there's assessments, right? So these are multiple choice quizzes. Every question has one correct answer and it's used to test knowledge on a topic. So how much do you know about um, um, digital marketing? How much do you know about copywriting? How much do you know about um, career um, um, you know, about, you know, how much do you know about a certain topic? It'd be great to use these quizzes, for instance, for people who taught professional exams. Um, you could use this to do a professional exam um, quiz to test somebody's specific knowledge on a topic. Um, so there's so many different ways that you could use this in your business. Um, but in terms of lead generation, in terms of using quizzes on LinkedIn, to build your email list and to send people to the appropriate call to action, you should use a personality quiz. I've spoken about why they're awesome and I am seeing 70% lead generation, 70% um, conversion rates on these quizzes, specifically coming from places like LinkedIn, social media. So guys, get on board with a personality quiz. Now, what strategy do we use to take, um, use quizzes to get clients, right? Because that's what we're really interested in. Well, I have a very specific quiz hacking method that allows this to happen easily. And there are eight steps, as you can see, I'm gonna take you through the steps and explain to you how this all fits together and why you should care, why it's so powerful um, and how this can, change your business and increase your bottom line. So 
On LinkedIn, we do know that our ideal client is on LinkedIn, on the highways and byways of LinkedIn. And we need to catch that person's attention. And the quiz is a great way to do that. So I'm going to go through a quiz that I've created that encompasses these different steps in the quiz hacking methodology, the quiz hacking framework. Um, so the first step is be on your platform of choice, right? So LinkedIn is a great um, social media platform, um, a B2B platform where we know that people are congregating and they're just waiting for you to spark their attraction. So this is where your message is really important, guys. Your messaging and your communication is the thing that will spark your ideal client's attention on LinkedIn. And so I'm not gonna go into messaging um, too much here, but your message, it starts from your message. So how are you crafting your message and what are you saying on LinkedIn? How are you making sure you're visible on LinkedIn? How are you engaging with influencers and your ideal market? It's not always about you just posting. It's also about you engaging with other people's content because this drives traffic back to your profile. So you want people to see your specific message on LinkedIn. Are you writing pulse articles? There's different ways. LinkedIn live streaming is coming up. There's different ways to get your message out. But the um, message should be connected to this quiz that's going to ask a question. All right. And so that's how we get people to see our quiz in the first place with a powerful, well-crafted, articulate message that communicates who we are, what we do, and calls out the ideal client that you want to speak to. So my message is, um, my message is to entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, course creators. Um, I also call them access entrepreneurs, authors, coaches, consultants, experts, speakers, and service providers, right? So these are the people that I want to speak to, which I, I call them entrepreneurs. And I want to know what type of entrepreneur they are. Now, the quiz that you create, the question that you create, should be appropriate for the stage of um, market awareness of your ideal client. And so I'm not going to talk about anything industry specific in my quiz. It's a generic quiz that is calling out entrepreneurs, right? I want to find out what type of entrepreneur they are, and I want to find out what problems that they're having, because I have a specific solution at the end of the quiz to help them. Okay, so let's go and look at this first step, which is, excuse me, let me go back, which is a curiosity driven um, cover page. So let's quickly um, see if I can nip over to um, give you an example. So a curiosity driven cover page looks like this, right? Well, the quiz title is very important. It calls out your ideal client and it also injects curiosity, which leads them to want to discover what you are talking about. So we have this um, title, which celebrity entrepreneur are you actually most like? Um, so I'm calling out, who am I calling out here? I'm calling out entrepreneurs, all right? We've got some humor in there because we've got celebrities in there, right? And um, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, if you identify as an entrepreneur, this speaks to you. And, you know, if you kind of um, like the humorous approach, you really want to know, you know, okay, let's find out who I'm most like, right? And maybe you have this idea that you're actually most like, you know, your favorite entrepreneur, the person that probably makes the most amount of money. So, for instance, if you were in a specific niche, you could change this. What, um, um, if you were a coach, if you're a consultant, if you were um, a money mindset coach, if you were a sales coach, if there was a particular um industry leader you could swap that in here right what celebrity sales coach what celebrity entrepreneur what celebrity um um whatever it is author are you most like right um so now that actually is really important here because it um it suggests that you you thought something, but you actually didn't have the right answer. And so therefore, this adds more curiosity. And then we have a problem-centric description that describe or tagline that describes why you should take the quiz, right? So it poses a problem and helps you with a solution, right? And then we have a bold call to action to take the quiz. Now, I also want to point that the quiz image is really important. You should have a quiz image. When you share this quiz, um, this is the image that will be um, 
shown and it drives um it, you know it injects more curiosity i like to use flashing gifs here so that there's some movement here and it catches my eye right especially on linkedin you want something to become a pattern interrupt so this is a great way to create a pattern interrupt when your quiz is on linkedin and then you take the quiz okay um, and now I'm going to go back to the seven psychological questions. I've got nine here, but the optimum is seven of questions that you should ask. I'm not going to go through exactly the structure of questions, but what happens is people don't know what questions to ask in a quiz, so they ask random questions. No, guys, there's at least seven self-identifying questions that you should ask. And this is why quizzes are so powerful, because they tap into human psychology. And so the questions that you ask are kind of like a mini sales page, right? A mini psychological sales page that is helping the um, quiz taker to self-identify and self-elect their problems, right? And so I'm going to go through this quiz here. Um, this is a personality quiz. So I'm asking very specific questions and I'm using humor to pull the person through the quiz. Too many times on quizzes, there's no um there's no incentive to move through because people get bored very easily so even the way that you ask your question and the answers to the question should be engaging should be compelling should not be boring or bland should make if your if your ideal client's not chuckling at one point through the quiz you're not doing it right um when I ask questions, I put scenarios in there, but still these are psychological questions. Your fairy godmother grants you one business wish. You're dancing for joy. What did you get? Um, I've got a great gift here from someone from the Real Housewives of New York. Make sure that when you use images, they are appropriate pop culture for the demographic and target market that you are attracting. So if you are attracting um, baby boomers, there'd be no um, it'd be no use to, um, to use an image that was like, you know, tweens, right? Had something that the tweens would love, right? Or the younger millennials, okay? So make sure that you're putting the appropriate pop culture and humor into your quiz, right? That matches the target market that you're reaching, okay? So again, I've asked another question. Your price is your brand. In what store can your ideal client find your products and services? So here I'm asking about um, pricing. I'm trying to find the level of their products and services. I'm trying to see where they are in the market. But I'm not just saying, what's your price, right? There's different ways to ask things, right? You can make things funny. You can, again, put pop culture in it. You know, if you're, um, in, West, if you're in America, obviously a lot of these stores people will know, JCPenney's, Macy's, Walmart. And so therefore, it kind of, you know, it, it makes people feel relevant, right? That you're speaking to them. Um, and then I said, your last, um, um, your last launch was a flop. Conversion karaoke will get you amped for the next one. What are you singing? And so I've sneakily injected song titles in here. And these are song titles that if you're talking to a specific um, demographic, they should know, right? So Madonna Like a Player, Journey Don't Stop Believing, Britney Spears, Baby One More Time. Obviously, I'm not talking to um, you know, the younger kids because they might not know this, right? So it's in in keeping it's appropriate with the target market that I'm trying to reach, right? Um, and then we keep going through. So these were some more things there. There's um, Kathy Lee and Hoda, my favorites, okay? But again, pop culture, pictures, humor is what is needed to drag people through, as well with the psychological question and the great answers. The answers should also come from the problem domain, guys. Don't make up random answers. When you do your market research on a quiz, and that's why quizzes are so, they're so powerful, but people think that it's just really quick. They can put any kind of content in there. There's a lot of market research that goes into making an awesome high converting quiz. And the answers come from the problem domain. So if you don't know what people are saying in a problem domain, it's gonna be very hard for you to curate and craft these great answers. So go out there and find out what people are saying and then just say it back to them on the quiz. Now, um, this is the um, third stage of the quiz hacking methodology. You should always capture email here, okay? Always capture email here and make it mandatory. Now, how do you get people to um, give you their email address without giving you something like none of your business at gmail.com? 
or you can incentivize the email opt-in. I haven't given an example here, but I have a specific strategy that helps you to incentivize that email opt-in so that you actually get the correct email address because they want to be in your inbox um, as opposed to PDF lead magnets where they're trying to keep you out of their inbox and maybe they put you in that um, email um, address inbox for spammy marketers that maybe they check maybe once a month and it has about 50,000 unread emails in it. So you don't want to be in that email inbox, right? You want to be in their best email um, inbox. Um, sorry, you want to be you want to be given the best email so that you're in the correct inbox and that you're visible, all right? So this is important. Do not skip this part. This is the whole point of the call, um, of the quiz, being able to collect leads. So let's just put something in here. And then you see the results. Now the results are important, okay? And let's talk a little bit about this. The results that you choose, if I quickly go back to the quiz hacking methodology, the results you choose are important. So there's a problem aware. I talked about the answers being problem aware, coming from the problem domain, okay? And there's a special way that you map your answers to the results. We did the incentivized email capture, and then I really want to go to this solution-oriented results, which is so important. So what happens is before you even start creating the questions, you have different categories for the archetype that you are going to map those answers to. Okay, I would choose no more than four. Okay, four is optimal. You can go on a little bit more, but four different categories or four um um, groups um, of um, people is great and each archetype you give a name okay so for instance um, it's I have to give a concrete name here because I ask for celebrity entrepreneurs right but you can give an archetype um, a characteristic so for another quiz that I have I have like um, what um, help do you need to hire to um, um, launch your online course profitably. So I gave generic archetypes, not a specific person. I had something like the storyteller, the strategist, the designer, the organizer, something like that, right? So you can give these people um, archetype names from your problem domain that they'll understand. Make sure that the result that you give them is neg neg never negative, otherwise it doesn't incentivize somebody to share. Nobody wants to tell somebody that they got Debbie down on a, on a quiz. So make sure that the person or the archetype that you have attributed to the results is positive. Even if there's a negative connotation behind it, put it in a positive light. What is really powerful about my quiz hacking methodology is that instead of just giving the archetype and some text underneath, we give video results, right? Remember guys, you guys are building authority on LinkedIn and video is one of the most effective ways these days to build that no like trust factor with your audience. So they wanna see more of you in motion as possible. And so instead of just giving text, I actually deliver the results and these are solution-based results. They're not results that like a BuzzFeed quizzes that really don't have anything to say. You know, it feels like fluff. You don't want someone to feel cheated that they've given you their information. So actually give them some value, some solution and strategy-based results. So that's what I do here. You go through. You can't see me, um, hear me, but you can, I'm talking away here and I'm telling you why you scored and I'm telling you what's wonderful about scoring as this person. And then I go on to give you a few tips and tricks that will help you in the path that you are on, okay? Now, the important part about video results is you make sure that they are captioned. Many people um, are watching these videos at work or maybe they're lying in bed with a partner next to them and you know they're not trying to wake that person up. So if you have closed captions on your video, right, you get better conversion. So make sure that you, you're doing that. Make sure that you give strategic results and make sure that you use this opportunity to tell people exactly who you are, what you do, and how you help them. So that's where your messaging comes in. It must be very succinct, it must be very quick, 
You only have, you know, one time to leave a lasting impression and let them know exactly who you are. Like, why are they on your quiz and how do you help them? If they're your target market, you will become relevant. Now, on this quiz, um, on the results, what you must do is close the loop that caused them, right, to have the curiosity to follow you this far through the quiz. So close that, satisfy that, don't leave them hanging. But what you do is when you close that one loop, you open another by introducing a new problem that is relevant to their situation and telling them that if they want to solve the problem, they should follow you on the call to action. And that's why the call to action is so important here, guys. Call to action is so important because this is how you use that quiz. Now you've got a subscriber. Now this is how you take the subscriber to become a sale. And it depends on what sales funnel you have structured. So even though I've showed you the quiz, the quiz is part of your quiz funnel. And the funnel is what moves your ideal client through different milestones in your workflow to take you closer and closer and closer to becoming a sale. So it depends on what funnel you have designed. I am a sales funnel strategist and I help you actually design the next steps beyond the quiz. I help you design the quiz, but the steps beyond the quiz that can take that person to becoming a client, becoming a course um, a member, becoming a student, becoming a customer, or whatever it is that you wish to, um, you wish to present to them. And so for some people, the next step may be join a Facebook group. Some people, it might be, let's hop on a call and let's see if we're a good fit. For some people, you might want to indoctrinate them more. It's to um, read a blog post or, you know, consume a YouTube video. But what must happen is that when these people opt in, you do not ghost them. When they opt in, they get a welcome email. And so I'm going to quickly nip back here. Okay. They get a welcome email. And we also segment these people in our email autoresponder based on the answers and the result that they've given us and so therefore this is behind the hood in i use active campaign guys you could use constant contact convert kit active campaign infusion soft so many different autoresponders out there that allow you to tag your subscribers so um, i'm using the try interact quiz platform which is absolutely awesome and it allows you to send that information and integrate it with different email autoresponders, email marketing software, and tag. And also, it allows you to send. So once you tag somebody, you can send a welcome email, right? So I always send a welcome email to tell people who they are. I mean, you know, welcome them to um, come on my list, thanking them for taking the quiz. I actually include a picture of myself. The email is humorous. I congratulate them on getting this far because most people don't. So I want them to feel like they've actually achieved something. And then I profile who that person is and why they're on my list. So I tell them, I tell them, I tell them their story, right? If you're attracting the right ideal client, you should understand why they're on your list, who they are. So I, I tell them back, I say that back to them. And then I um, tell them how I can help them and I invite them to the next step, which may not at that point be to sell. It could be to give them more value. And so after you've given them a welcome email, a nurture sequence should come. That is part of your funnel. A nurture sequence is where you build that relationship with your subscriber and turn them into a supporter because at the moment they are still a subscriber. They don't have that bond with you until you cultivate that relationship. So you can do that in email, but you most definitely do it on the next stage of your quiz. And I'm going to show you here. So especially on LinkedIn, um, where the sell cycle can be a lot shorter, I ask people to get on a call with me. So my next call to action is to jump on a free um, discovery and decision-making call. And this works really well for people off LinkedIn because many times you just want to be able to get somebody on the phone and build rapport with them. If it's a sales call, if it's a discovery call, if it's a strategy, strategy call, that kind of good stuff. This works really well for me. So I ask people to book a 20 minute discovery call and then we um, have a great time on the call to see if we're a great fit. 
And this would be appropriate for many of you who are coaches, who are consultants, who do high ticket sales, right? To get more bookings in your sales calendar. If you're a course creator, um, the next step would be a little bit different. Maybe you would have a low ticket offer that you want to present to them. Maybe you have a webinar that you want them to subscribe to so that you can sell them your signature offer. Um, so many different ways, but the quickest and easiest way is to get somebody on a call and have a conversation with them. And that is how you turn, use quizzes to turn LinkedIn, um, your LinkedIn audience into clients, right? into subscribers first and then into clients. So now the sale doesn't always happen straight away. Um, most times it doesn't. You need to build that rapport with people, but now they're in your sales funnel. Now you have them on your list. You don't need to um, congregate them on social media anymore. If you didn't have social media, you would still have your list. And it's a very powerful way, a very quick way of bonding with your client segmenting them according to their desires, their struggles, so that you can send them the relevant content that will make them see you as the go-to authority or influencer in your industry. And then build enough rapport that they trust you enough to you know, take the next step with you, whether that's to get on your webinar, get on a sales call with you, consume your content. Um, and sooner or later, if you play your cards right, if you do things in a very strategic way, they'll be begging you to take their credit cards and opening their wallets and saying, you know what, I'm ready to work with you. Um, you are the influencer for me. I, you know, watched you. I've seen your content. I feel confident that you can help me solve my problem. Let's do this. Okay. So that's my quiz hacking methodology to use LinkedIn and quizzes to get clients. Really simple, really powerful, guys. Do not um, sleep on this strategy. Take action. It's a very simple um, strategy. Quizzes are powerful. And um, if you need any information or you have any questions, I would love to help you with that. My name is Caroline Onyedema, and my um, consulting and coaching business is called Ideal Clients Daily. You can meet and um, you can find me at idealclientsdaily.com. And if any of you would like a free consult on how to put quizzes together, and build quiz funnels that will take a subscriber and turn them into a sale. So take a stranger to become a subscriber and then turn them into a sale. I would love to speak to you to see if we're a good fit. You can reach me on idealclientsdaily.com forward slash consult. Set up a free discovery and decision making call and let's talk if quizzes are a best fit for your business. I also have a quiz hacking cheat sheet that you can opt in for. And you should be able to access that somewhere in this, um, in this summit. Um, it should be made available to you. Opt in for that and you'll get some more information based on um, this quiz hacking methodology that I have. But it's been an absolute blast. Thank you so much. And I will hopefully talk to you soon.